Okay, so we have now the last presenter, as a Stefan Amerini. He's from University of Texas at Arlington. So he's also uh, our one of the uh, partner university members. And then he's going to present uh, transportation mobility for all the others in low density urban environments. So I'll be uh, kind of adding on to where Keith left off. Uh, our research that we, I, we're undertaking is actually a collaboration between engineering and social work. It's going to be my first time working with social work people. And so they're, they're bringing an entirely different perspective to the needs of the community. And that's really one of the primary focuses associated with this research. Uh, We'll talk a little bit uh, here why we're focusing on, on older adults. One of the prime reasons is it's a, a key topic area for uh, uh, two of the social work researchers. But uh, we'll also be developing a data collection app that we're going to be using with some tablets uh, for this. I'll talk about our methodology, trying to uh, look at the overall structure we have, which is trying to innovate and build on our, our concept of travel diaries, but now try to think about it in terms of missed travel activities. What are our missed activities? And trying to think beyond just what trips have we made. Uh, we'll look at the experiments. We're, we're going to be looking at these electronic data collection and some uh, other alternatives. And then I'll, I'll cover our key questions that we're hoping to get out of this research and our future steps. Just to give you a quick introduction to Arlington, Texas, where our, uh, uh, our participants are going to be recruited, uh, this is a typical arterial. We have no sidewalk. Uh, we also have no public transit at all. Uh, 400,000 people, no public transit. So clearly there are significant transportation challenges we have for anyone who does not have an automobile. We're facing a significant mismatch uh, as we move forward between our, where the older adults live and uh, the transportation facilities that are available to them and services. We are also seeing an increase in the suburban poor. Uh, these two things coming together means that we're going to have a lot more people uh, that are going to have transportation challenges as we move forward. Uh, these uh, can come from low income, uh, the disabilities that we, we just heard about, uh, and health related factors. And then we will see these uh, also impacted by limited social connections as they age in place and their social networks may fray. When we look at safety, uh, we could have two safety factors that, that we're going to be thinking about. Uh, the safety related to driving, uh, when we get to the much, el much older adults, I guess they were called the old, old uh, earlier. And then uh, also looking at personal safety when we're thinking about access to, to transportation. Uh, and looking at the overall social exclusion and quality of life for these individuals. Current research has really focused on the factors that impact transportation mobility, not really trying to look at, and is focused on observed travel behavior, not looking at what are these gaps and where are our, our failures in our transportation system. Uh, we need to make sure that there's access to healthcare services, to nutritious food, social connectivity. These are all clear needs, but we don't really understand how large these needs are, how frequently they occur. Uh, we don't have a lot of context about them. Uh, the environmental justice population in general, uh, where older adults uh, represent one of these populations, uh, we don't really uh, look at transportation service, uh, these gaps, we don't acknowledge them in our transportation plans. The MPOs don't focus on these, these gaps. It's, it's more, 
how do we serve the populations and the trips that we forecast to be occurring? And then uh, really continue to monitor, acknowledge any changes in our activity patterns. So our two broad research objectives are looking, collecting qualitative and quantitative data from low-income, transportation-disadvantaged older adults. We're trying to look at the suppressed travel act and activities, the frequency, the magnitude, the impact of these gaps on the individuals. We're also trying to look at their overall attitudes and their overall perceptions of the impacts on, uh, on them related to transportation. Uh, these are kind of overarching uh, issues. Also, uh, trying to look at this, testing the feasibility of using this electronic tablet in, a, in this structure for a digital platform to see if it's a viable uh, data collection technique for older adults. So let's take a look at Arlington, Texas. It's the third largest city in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, situated right between uh, Dallas and Fort Worth. It's also where you will see the Cowboys play on Sundays. Uh, you'll also see the Rangers play there in the uh, playoffs here in a little bit. Uh, that's pretty much the only thing Arlington is known for, and uh, they, they like to support their stadiums. Uh, we're also known, of course, for not having public transit. You can see that we've, we've grown continually in the Arlington area. We're uh, approaching build out. Uh, so there's not a lot of more developable land, so we're not going to grow much more than uh, the size we currently are. So uh, part of this research, we will be developing uh, an app that, and using tablets for, for data collection. The whole idea here is to craft uh, an app that can serve as a personal interview almost, where it can ask questions and the older adults will be able to just respond and talk to the tablets. Uh, as such, we'll be looking at open-ended uh, questions that uh, try to facilitate and, and elicit a variety of responses. Uh, if they don't like talking to it, they could use the keyboard, but we anticipate voice recognition will be largely ad adopted. Uh, we're also hoping to be able to uh, have them use the cameras inside the tablets to help create a visual documentation of disadvantages or uh, challenges and gaps that they experience in their transportation world. We're hopeful that this is going to increase participation uh, and improve the overall data quality of, of this effort. Uh, it certainly would enable us to uh, capture a lot more people on a more regular basis than trying to send out and do interviews and, and have interviews for data collection. As such, we'll be able to capture any modes in all activities beyond just healthcare. We're, we're looking at any activities the, these individuals are wanting or needing to engage in. Our methodology is going to uh, be four, uh, four phases. Uh, before we even get started, we'll have to do uh, recruitment. Then we'll pilot the app, do all the beta testing on that, all the questions related to our interview. And then we'll start off with a baseline interview where we're just trying to understand where they are personally, where, what do they perceive as their, their challenges, uh, any disabilities that they perceive or try to identify any. Then we'll be separating our group into two uh, separate groups. One will start with the electronic data collection. One will start with the paper and pen uh, data collection. And then they'll switch after two weeks so that we can do a compare and contrast between these two uh, approaches. We'll also have a phase four to, to our data collection. And this is looking long range, uh, way out uh, three to four months afterwards that, that they've done their activity diary. And here, we're trying to see, have anything changed? Have they done anything differently 
with respect to their travel uh, after they've uh, done the diary. And then it also gives us a, a better opportunity to capture a larger log of significant activities that were missed, such as baptisms of grandchildren or uh, sisters' birthdays or something like that where they, we wouldn't capture that necessarily very well during just a, a one month period. We want to see what kind of major events are, are being missed because these certainly will tear at, at uh, and impact social connectivity and, and overall quality of life. Our, our app is going to be structured in, in such a way that it's going to open with a morning interview where the morning interview is trying to get people to identify the things that they want, need, but also want to engage in during the day. And this kind of just sets the stage for these are I idealized activities uh, as opposed to this is what I did. So we're starting off with, with these are our goals for the day. And then at, in the evening, we'll follow up with did it actually happen? If not, why not? Uh, what were the challenges that you faced in engaging in these activities? This is trying to give us uh, a sense for are there disconnects and gaps that are occurring? And then throughout the data collection period, we're going to mix in a few extra questions just to get some, some overall senses of, of the impacts that the participants, participants are feeling. And then also just their, their connection to transportation, the role that it plays in their lives. When we're looking at uh, the two different strategies, the electronic versus the paper and pen, uh, we're going to be trying to look at the participation consistency, the depth of the response, uh, the reliability and consistency. If there happens to be keyboard versus uh, voice recognition, we'll also be looking at that. And then uh, trying to look at, and then at overall, we, we will do additional uh, uh, data assessment related to the responses. So our key research questions here are characterizing the transportation gaps and the lost opportunities for older adults. And then the, uh, if possible, trying to uh, start to look at the relationship between the activities, the living situation, and any other factors with particular types of gaps. But most importantly, looking at the frequency and the importance of the gaps. Uh, that's clearly something that's not very well understood. Transportation gaps and their impacts, these certainly aren't going to be a, a medical assessment, but we can still look at personal uh, senses of uh, mental and physical health impacts, economic, sense of place, overall quality of life. And this is also a good start for looking at the feasibility of this data collection strategy so that we can think about where we can extend that. When we look at safety implications, if we're going to have older adults that at some point when they become 80 years old or older and we need to start to encouraging them to not drive any longer, we need to understand what are the challenges they're going to be facing. Because how can we convince someone to give up uh, driving, given these are the consequences that they will experience when we don't develop programs and policies to address those. So by understanding the, the, all of the issues and gaps that they'll face, we're going to be able to develop better programs and policies, I think. And then uh, we also may be able to understand and identify actions uh, that older adults may undertake to continue to achieve mobility. So uh, overall, uh, this research is, is looking at developing, uh, developing and evaluating this innovative data collection strategy, which we think actually has uses uh, for other uh, older adult research, but also potentially other uh, data collection for environmental justice populations for transportation. Looking at the impact that the gaps have is really important 
uh, especially in these low density suburban areas, and the magnitude and frequency of the gaps. When we look at the extensions of this research, um, the programs and policies certainly are one important piece, but expanding this methodology to other uh, environmental justice populations also represents a really uh, good opportunity for us to uh, enhance transportation planning and to try to focus not only on the trips that are occurring, but on looking at the gaps that are out there in our transportation system and the consequences of those gaps. There, as a result, we might be able to strengthen service to environmental justice populations and then also develop uh, a research roadmap for performance measures, data collection programs, and moving this hopefully into practice. And I'm done.